By the turn of the 20th century, the era of mass armies and industrial war had dawned. When the British Army's deployment to South Africa in the Boer War revealed a worrying lack of young men fit enough to join the army, the National Service League and some politicians lobbied for the introduction of compulsory military training. The League's leadership included well-known soldiers, celebrities like Lord Roberts and Robert Baden-Powell. The creation of the Boy Scouts was for them the second best option, helping create a pool of militarised youth. When the First World War began in 1914, the long-standing establishment reluctance to introduce conscription was still powerful, but by the end of 1914, the rush of volunteers had slowed, and in 1915, the government turned to moral coercion, launching recruitment drives, and then the Derby scheme. It wasn't enough. In January 1916, the first bill to introduce conscription received royal assent. It was an almost unprecedented extension of state power. British men from 18 to 41 were legally deemed to have been duly enlisted for the duration of the war. Continental Europe mass armies were all built on this type of conscription, but it felt very alien to the British. Age, occupation, ill health and conscientious objection could all exempt a man from service, but every man was legally born a soldier, waiting for his call-out papers. Some marched in protest, and hundreds of thousands of applications and appeals for exemptions were approved or rejected by endless tribunals. In Ireland, the prospect of conscription led to the real threat of armed rebellion. In those countries of the empire that gave their electorates a choice, some voted for, some against. Even so, many thought it was time the slackers did their bit, and by the end of 1916, more than a million men had been called up and went, whether they wanted to go or not. The Military Service Act was repealed in 1920, but a precedent had been set. In May 1939, with Germany again threatening war, a limited form of conscription was introduced. War began four months later, and conscription was extended by stages until it applied to all men and women between the ages of 19 and 60. With the Cold War following hard upon the end of the Second World War, governments were unwilling to end national service, and it continued until 1960. National servicemen, and it was just men, between the ages of 17 and 21 had to serve two years in peacetime, and many duly served in Malaya, Korea, Cyprus and Suez. Some were killed in these conflicts. Some conscripts thought national service was great, others most definitely did not. The UK had a form of national service for 44 years. The Ministry of Defence has no plans to reintroduce it, but that never stops pundits, politicians and the occasional royal suggesting it would be a good idea. Could it happen today? What do you think?